All right, so last week I showed you guys my entire private collection of knives and uh, what knives um, are gonna be up for auction very soon. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking for the Patreon auctions. They will be coming online very soon. I'm photographing everything now, getting everything ready. And so by the time you guys see this video, the first auction should probably be happening next week. Since that video, a lot of you guys have been asking me what are my top picks, what knives will be going into my kitchen. And I haven't done a top five in quite a long time. I think it's been at least maybe two to maybe even three years since I made a top five pick. By the time I make the official top five knives of 2020, it will be five knives. But uh, I'll explain to you why I've got more than one knife from a maker here. So let me just go through my little list here of knives I've got. Um, so a lot of folks have been asking about the Yu Kurosaki blue turquoise handle, the R2 um, Kuritsuke. So that knife is going into my home. And so I'm not going to sell it because I love this knife. Uh, even though it's not a chef knife, it's a knife that uh, I know my wife will love. It's got the perfect shaped handle. It's got the R2 SU2 core steel. Uh, it's stainless steel. I'm a huge fan of Kuritsuke's, but this size, 180 millimeters, is a perfect size for my wife. My wife likes utilities and pairing knives, but I think she'll love this knife here. So that's why this is going into my personal collection. Uh, so this is 135 millimeter um, Petty by uh, Kato. I'm a huge fan of uh, Kato's uh, knives with the Tsuchime and the Damascus cladding with the handles made by Sadao Nishihara. So this knife is going into my personal collection just as personal use. It's not included in the top five. It's just here because I was sorting knives out. So I just left it out here to remind myself to bring it home. <laughs> so that's why these two knives are here. Um, so on to the knives that will be featured in the top five video. I've got two here by Yu Kurosaki. The first is a 210 Fuin with the VG10 core steel. And the second is the 240 millimeter Shizuku model with the SU2 core steel. Now I've been using the Shizuku in my home earlier this year for about a good two months or so and I really enjoyed it. And then a lot of folks were asking why I don't feature or view VG10 knives. It's mainly because I've gone into the artisan route and a lot of artisans still make VG10 knives, but they have kind of shifted their focus to making knives with R2 or SG2, ZDP, uh, Hat 40s, and Agami Super as well, blue number two. It's also another steel that a lot of artisans like to use. Um, so Yu Kurosaki makes a beautiful VG10 core steel using the Fuin. And so I bought the 210 millimeter version that's why that's here. So between these two knives, I will make a distinction between them and uh, make the appropriate pick for the top five knives. Uh, the next knife is the Unryu, the Unryu Blue Number no. Two with the Tsuchime finish, an absolutely gorgeous knife. Uh, anything you can buy from Unryu, go get it. He is probably going to retire very, very soon. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if 2020 is his last year of making knives. This is a beautiful knife. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of his work. The Tsuchime finish is just, I think, kind of a, um, I wouldn't call it the epitome of Unryu knives, but it's definitely one of the most, you know, well-defined knives that he's made. I love this knife. It's been in my home not very long, for a little over a week, uh, but now it's going to be used, you know, next to all these other knives here, so I'll get a really good impression of it. The grind, fit and finish, and the overall geometry of this knife here by Unryu is just spectacular. Um, it's a knife that I think anyone who is getting into Japanese knives will definitely adore. Uh, the next knife we have here is a Moritaka. So this is the 240 version of the Aogami Super. Um, you can also buy the 210 and 240 version with the blue number two. So whether you buy the blue Super or the blue number two, it's gonna have the same Kuriyoshi finish. I'm pretty sure of all the Kuriyoshi finishes that I've seen, it's the only one that has that brushed metal look. I've never seen a Kuriyoshi finish like this one here. Also, a really amazing thing with Moritaka is that they are quite affordable. If you bought a Aogami Super or a Blue Super, uh, 210mm Gyoto, it will cost you at $200 starting price, and the 240 is about 220 so very affordable. Um, given that these are made by a team of four, they've got 700 years of katana and sword making history, the Moritakas are just an incredible value when it comes to price to performance ratio. You know, if this was like an Italian brand, it would sell for I would say they would find a way to sell this for like two or three thousand dollars. Now this is an arm review box, <laughs> but it's got the kato knife in it. Um, so I've got three katos here, and there's a reason why. Both these knives were made with the Sadao Nishihara handles. I would say the last quarter of 2019, I used the R2 version, uh, three layer Tsuchime finish substantially the most in my home. Uh, that, that knife probably got at least four months of use in my home. 
And then I also had the 69 layers. Um, that was in my home for, I would say, about only a couple of weeks. And I liked it. And I kept it in here because I haven't used the 69 layers enough to really give it a definitive comparison in terms of performance between that model and the Tsuchime model. The top knife here is the newest addition to the Kato lineup. It's got Agami Super Core Steel, uh, 64, 65 Rockwell, and it's got the Nishiji finish. It's a really rustic finish. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite finish, but I definitely like that finish a lot. It just has a really cool look to it. It gives the knife a more subtle look, but a very rustic look. Um, and also in terms of price, it's like $200 less than these other two knives here. So I feel like the Algami Super version of the Kato is going to be a better knife to buy for people who are just looking for a knife um, to be used every day versus a knife that has a more of a collector's touch to it. The other knife I have got here is the Saji. This is the Saji R2 Damascus uh, with the black oxide finish. So I did a uh, sharpening double with the Tsuchi Hiki model. That was in my home, uh, in my kitchen for about three months. Uh, and before the Tsuchi Hiki, I had the mirror polish Damascus um, Gyoto in my home. And that was a fantastic knife. With these other knife makers here, you may have like a 20 to 30% reduction in thickness from the area where you measure above the heel on the spine um, to like an inch above, right? So if you measure an inch above the heel area, the overall spine thickness has been reduced 20, 30%. On Saji's knives, you will still have a reduced thickness of 20-30%, but that reduction happens over the course or over the length of the entire length of the spine. So you have a much more gentle reduction of thickness. And so what that translates to is, I feel like it gives the blade a bit more stability, uh, in my opinion, when using his knives. Um, <laughs> and to be really honest, it's also an excuse for me to keep this knife in my drawer and just to have it as a a permanent fixture in my kitchen. The last knife we have here is a knife that you guys are all familiar with, or at least you guys are familiar with if you guys have been on my channel for the last at least two years or so. Um, I've mentioned this knife a lot. It's the Akazawa um, Chao Ao, and it's just a fantastic knife. Yeah, it's got the Aogami Super Core Steel heat treated from 64 or 65. Uh, the knife that retired the rope cut test. <laughs> so I don't like to feature the same knife twice or you know, in a top five video. I have a knife here that I'm ordering that I want to compare, kind of do a side by side comparison with the Akazawa once it arrives. I won't tell you what it is yet because I don't know if, I, if it actually will arrive <laughs> on time. But um, on paper, it's Algami Super 65 Rockwell, um, 210 millimeters. It's virtually identical in terms of the specs on paper as the Akazawa, um, but it costs, I want to say like 280 or 290 or so, so substantially less. Um, so I'm really curious to see what the knife is going to perform like when it arrives. So that's why I'm not taking this knife out of the collection because I believe that once I have the other knife here, I'm going to use those two knives side by side and the best knife from that comparison will go into this top five for the end of the year. And before the official top five video is released, I will do my best to do individual reviews of each knife so that you guys will know um, what I'm talking about when the top five knives actually is released. If you guys have very strong feelings about some artisan made knives out there that you want me to see, let me know in the comments. If I can get those knives soon enough, I can probably add it to the top five videos before the year is over. Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for being here and I'll catch you in the next one.